Alright, alright, morning everyone. How you guys doing? We're almost done now. Part of my pencil just fell. Alright, so today we're going to be doing uh, the lecture for the very last lab. So last one, almost done. And that's going to be it. So it's going to be pretty fast today. Actually really fast. And um, yeah, so for, for 306B, that's the, the next lab we're going to take. The lectures for that lab are going to be a lot longer than what we've had here. Just a, just a warning now that we're almost done with this semester. Alright, so you're memos for lab five i haven't been able to get to grading them yet i'll grade them this week i've been really busy with my well the classes that i'm taking and the other class that i'm teaching so i'll get to them probably starting you know throughout the week and then of course i'll get them gr graded by when you have to start working on your next lab or le next memo all right so today we're going to be doing the double year double shear stress test lecture so I didn't get the page up yet um, but you know we're just doing the lecture today so that's it all right so let's first get a look at what this is gonna look like Dang it. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys this first, and then we're going to do the lecture. So first off, test setup. Of course, we're using the same exact uh, machine that we always use, the MTS Insight Tensile Testing Machine. Uh, but we have some different fixtures on it now. So again, this experiment is called the Double Shear Stress Test. So basically, we're going to be failing some materials by shear. Okay, so we have three different materials here. We have aluminum over here then we have copper over here and then we have 1018 steel here um actually this one is the aluminum looks like all right so um basically this is how you would set it up so we're going to have our rod and it's going to go through this piece here which is going to be in the center right here and if these little pieces go in here Let's see if there's a better picture. There you go. All right, so that's how it would be. And you'd put your rod through here. And basically, let's see if there's another good picture. All right, so this part right here, it would go down. And then we would have our rod that would fail in these in one part here and one part here. So it's failing in two different locations or it's shearing in two different locations. That's why it's called double shear. So here you can see when it fractured, so one part it fell down here, and the other part just barely sticking out. Um, but of course again, it's going to shear in those two different spots. And then after that, after it uh, fails, we can use our little camera here that's nice and magnified, and we can see the fracture surface for the shear step or for the shear test. So if we have something that's ductile, we're going to see a lot of kind of smearing, we usually call it. And if it's a little more brittle, we're not going to have as much smearing here. So you'll see for, for copper, this kind of pattern that you see on the very edge here, it would be across basically the entire surface. All right, so that's a little preview of what the experiment's going to look like. All right, so now let's talk about the theory. So I think you've talked about shear stress probably really early on in your um, stress mechanics class. So this will hopefully be mostly review. Shearing and bearing stress. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here, and then I'm going to open up my iPad.
All right, so forgot my webcam. It's not going to show up now because I'm on my iPad, but that's okay. All right. Okay, so first off, we're going to talk about the definition of, sh of shear stress. Again, hopefully this is a review from the very beginning of your 331 class. So shear stress is going to be the intensity of the internal force that we have that acts on a surface that's parallel to the internal forces. So I think it's easier if we kind of draw a picture and we can visualize that a bit better. But first off, we'll have that definition here. All right, so let's see if I can draw this. It's going to be terrible, so fair warning. Let's say that we have this kind of set up here. So I'm going to have one plate here, and then I'm going to have a pin. And I'm going to draw another plate here. So imagine that 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 this plate in purple that this is behind our plate in black and connecting those two plates we have our pin. So we got our pin right there. Okay, so if I pull down this plate in purple with a force P, that's going to put shear stress on our pin and eventually that pin is gonna fail by shearing. All right, so um, basically this is like one kind of section for what we're going to have in our lab here. Okay, let's add on here. So basically what we have is the force that is, um, you know, being applied to our purple bar. That's going to be transmitted to the pin, and then the pin will eventually fail if we keep applying a force to it. Okay, so this shear force that we have that's on the pin, that's going to be um, basically along the transverse cross-section of the pin. So basically it's going to, you know, we're going to be looking at that cross-sectional area, pi over 4 divided by, or pi over 4 times d squared. Okay, so let's look at the equation that we have. Okay, so the shear stress that we have that's acting on this pin, we can represent it by tau. And then we're going to say that tau is going to be equal to V 
over a sub v. So v, that's going to be the shearing force that we have, and a sub v, that's going to be the area of the resisting section. So basically, it is our cross-sectional area that we have. Okay. All right, so for our experiment, instead of having this single shear uh, setup that we just drew here, we're going to have double shear, right? So basically, this is occurring in two different spots. So we just saw that from the VK VKS kind of walkthrough. And um, so we have this setup in two different spots. So let's get a kind of a, a front view of what that looks like. Call that P. So on the left and the right here, these are our supports. And then we have some applied load P right here. And that's pushing down on, on this right here. Um, and then we're going to have shear. So we're going to have shear in two different areas. One is going to be here. And one is going to be right there. So we have two different fracture areas. And let's actually, let's go back to VKS really quick. Let me pull it up. Okay. All right, so on VKS, we have um, this middle part here, right? This is being pushed down onto the rod that we have. And when it's pushed down onto that rod, we have a shear force here on the left, and we have a shear force here on the right. And as we continue to push down or increase the force, um, you know, with this little, uh, I guess, section right here, eventually we're, it's gonna, the bar is gonna fail from shear, and then we can see the fracture surface for these two different um, fracture areas. One is here and the other is here. Okay. Okay, so now that we have two different uh, fracture surfaces, our formula for the shear stress is going to change a little bit. Instead of having just one fracture um, area, we have two. So basically, our revised formula, let's say, revised shear stress, we're going to have tau equals V, or you could say P, doesn't really matter, let's say P, over 2 times A sub V. So it's two times A sub V because again, we have these two different areas that we have drawn out. Okay, let's talk about experimental shear strength. Okay, so this experimental shear strength that we have, this is going to correspond to the maximum load that we have for the MTS machine. Uh, basically, that's going to occur at fracture. So that corresponding load, we're going to use that to calculate our corresponding experimental shear strength.
So it corresponds to maximum load applied at fracture. Okay, so this will be something that you calculate for your memo. So we're going to have tau experimental, that's going to be equal to the maximum force that we have. So, you know, I've said I've used V, I've used P, now I'm using F. They all represent the same thing, just the force that's applied. So we'll say F max, and you're going to be given this from the um, test works for software. Really, in the end, I'm going to give you probably like an Excel sheet that gives you all of that data. Okay, so we have the maximum force divided by 2, because we have two areas here. So 2 multiplied by that cross-sectional area, pi over 4, times d squared, where that's the cross-sectional area of, of the respective rod. All right, so let's have a little note here. So for our experiment... The geometry that we have, it's um, basically the primary form of failure is going to be from shear. But there al there's also going to be some um, failure that's occurring from bending and also from, from bearing stress. So let's write this out and then I'll again go back to VKS and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so we know bending stress. We had a whole experiment on that. And for bearing stress, we haven't done anything with that so far for the for the class, but you should have learned bearing stress as well, at least when I took the stress mechanics class, it was in the very beginning. And we kind of only briefly um, discussed it. So we're actually gonna be doing some calculations for bearing stress as well for this lab. Um, not gonna be um, the main focus of the lab, but we also are going to do a calculation for that. So before we talk about that, though, let's go back to VKS again. All right, so here um, we're going to have shearing, which, of course, we already talked about. We're going to have a shear failure right here, and we're going to have a shear failure right here. That's again from our rod that failed. So, you know, before we had a rod that was going through this entire setup here. And of course, like, I don't think there's a picture where they show it, all of this before it failed, which is interesting. Okay, you can actually see it here. So, um,. Yeah, you can see it here before it's fully set up. All right, so we have that shear failure that's going to occur, but we're also going to have bending because we have a force that's going down in the center, kind of like our beam lab that we had where we were calculating the experimental and the theoretical bending stress. So that's when we have our force going down here and we have some supports on the right and then one on the left. So there is some bending stress that's occurring there's also some bearing stress. So we have this rod here, and once we apply our force down, there is some shared area between the rod and our experimental uh, test setup here. Uh, this, it's, it's hard, at least to me, to visualize here to get an idea of what I'm talking about. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to pull up a video that I made for a past class for this lab and we're going to look at the bearing stress that we have for this test setup. 
So we'll get to that in a second. But point being, we have shear failure, and, and that's the main form of failure. But we also have bending stress and bearing stress. Okay, so before we talk about our bearing stress, so we have our experimental shear strength. We're also going to have a theoretical shear strength. Now, this is, you know, theoretical, but it's it's a pretty rough and pretty crude kind of approximation here. But we're going to compare the experimental shear strength to our theoretical uh, shear strength. Okay, so I say theoretical, but they're really, they're, you know, they are theoretical equations, but they were derived um, from experiments, so we have an, an empirical formula. So for copper, we have tau max, so that's going to be our maximum shear strength that we have. That's going to be 0 0.65 multiplied by the ultimate tensile strength for that material. And then for aluminum, tau max is going to be equal to the same thing. We have 0 0.65 multiplied by the ultimate tensile strength. And then for steel, we have tau max is equal to 0 0.75, so different now. 0 0.75 multiplied by the ultimate tensile strength. So again, these are empirical formulas. They're not going to be, you know, um, fancy equations like the Euler-Buckling equation or anything like that. They're pretty kind of crude approximations for what we should see for the for the shear strength. All right, so last thing we're going to talk about is the bearing stress. So again, we have shear stress. That's the main form of failure, or the, I guess I should really say the main form of stress. And we also have bearing stress, which we kind of the second most important form of stress here. And then there's some bending stress as well, but that's going to be minimal for what we have for this experiment. So we're calculating shear stress and we're also going to be calculating bearing stress. All right, so if, if you forget bearing stress, that's the the stress that we have for for the shared area that we have. So it's going to be the stress that we see for the shared area between our test rod and the hole that it sits in. So I'm going to say this for now, but um, once we visualize it with that past video that I made, you'll be able to understand it a bit more. I think bearing stress is, at least for me, it's always a little tricky to visualize. So let's say stress for the shared area of our test rod in the hole that it sits in. So the formula for this is going to be F, our force that's being applied, divided by that shared area. Okay, so we have sigma B, that's our bearing stress, equals our applied force divided by that shared area.
Okay, and then specifically for our lab, we're going to have our bearing stress is going to be equal to the force that's being applied divided by L times B, or sorry, L times D. Okay, so this shared area is going to be the length of the rod multiplied by the diameter of the rod. Okay, so I'm saying it's um, L is the length of the rod. It's really a portion of the length um, because not all of the rod is actually going to have this kind of shared area. All right, so let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Let me pull up the video for the visualization. I closed out of it before class. Wrong one. Okay. All right, so first off, before that video, come on, OneDrive. Oh, geez, hi. I zoomed in on my web browser, not this document. Here we go. Nope, not that. Okay, so here in red, this is the, the kind of the bearing stress that we have, or it's, it's our shared area, I should say. So within here, we're going to have this length of the rod. So of course, our rod, it actually extends outward, right? It would be here, and it would be here. But for the bearing stress, we need to look at that shared area. So that shared area is going to be within this um, kind of box in red here. Okay, so that's going to be the length of the rod that we have. And then the diameter of the rod is going to be, well, the diameter of the rod. So to visualize it a little bit more, I made a little model here a while ago. So we have our test rod here. And this is the, the kind of centerpiece that is being pushed down. And then here are the other kind of pieces that we have. So we have a piece here, we have a piece here, and this center piece that's being pushed down. All right, let's keep going here. So our bearing stress, you can see it here. So it's from starting here, ending here, it's this entire shared area. So um, we have the length of our rod so it starts from here ends here and then we have the diameter of our rod which you can see is the <laughs> diameter of the rod here okay so you can see that that's that shared area and once we apply our force down there's going to be that bearing stress because both the rod and these different kind of sections they have that shared area which again you can see here we have one two three Okay. And you can see a little different view here. So again, one more time, the shared area is everything starting from here to here for the specific, um, the, the area for the rod, so the diameter of our rod. All right, let's see if there's anything else. It's, pretty, it's a pretty simple lab. Actually, it's really simple. So I guess it's kind of nice for the, for the last lab. So we're going to be doing two tests. Uh, well, we won't, but we're going to be looking at data for two tests. And we're, uh, from that data, we're going to be making two graphs, basically. So we're going to be looking at the stress, uh, the shear stress over time, and how much it extends. So when I talk about the extension, really I'm talking about how much of this, our cross head here, moves down. So you can see that here we see the extension. And here's the load. We're going to be looking at how much this moves down, and we're going to make a plot for that. And to this plot, it's basically, 
it's gonna look it's gonna go like like that it's gonna go up and yeah it's not a super impressive plot but we're gonna, we're gonna be doing that next week so we're gonna see that our um, shear stress that's going to increase and then eventually it's going to uh, fail and for the bearing stress um, I think we have some stuff for that too. I think we're just calculating the bearing stress and that's it. But um, for the data that I had last semester, because, you know, that was online too. Or actually, no, it was a whole year ago now. Jeez, yeah, it's been a while, huh? So it's been a, a whole year ago since, at least that for that semester, is partly online. So the data that I had back then, I don't think I had data for the bearing stress which seems weird because the student should have calculated that. Anyways, we'll talk about that next week. Next week, we're going to for sure be calculating the shear stress. So we're going to have all of that data basically in, a, in, an, in an Excel sheet. And then we should be calculating the bearing stress as well, which again is a pretty simple formula because we have the force and we have the length of the rod and we have the diameter. I think if I didn't have the data, it was because the students didn't record the length of the rod after it failed, because you need to do that. All right, so that's the that's the lab or the lecture here. Um, so pretty fast, right? Next week we're gonna go over the the actual data reduction portion, and then we're gonna be done with all of the all of the experiments, and then we're gonna have. Well, you're going to have to do this memo as well, and then we're going to have a, a final. So we'll talk about the format for the final uh, once we start to approach that. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it next week. I um, need to look at the schedule again. Um, yeah, we're, we'll probably actually the, the week after we're going to talk about the, the final. All right, so if you have any questions, you can stick around and ask. If not, I'll see you guys I'll see you next week and your your memo for lab five that's also due uh, next week. So if you don't have any questions, I'll see you then. So have a good week and good luck. I'm guessing do you guys have midterms again around this time? I'm guessing you do. I don't know. Yeah, like in the middle of them right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, this week was like all midterms. Mm. Okay, that sucks. My other class, they have a project due today, so I feel bad then. All right, well, good luck on your, on your midterms. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Enjoy your week. Thanks, you too. Thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. Wait, the Sharpie lab is due today, right? Uh, no, it's due next week. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I forgot to like, well, if you click on the assignments, it shows it's due next week, but if you actually clicked on the assignment itself before, I had the wrong due date, but I fixed it uh, today. All right, thank you, brother. Mm-hmm.